never has a friend. That friend is neuroplasticity. I have a friend. That friend is Charmaine. The following presentation contains images that support the lesson, but may be confronting. I am deeply grateful for the gifts bestowed by the DeWitt family. We who view this material are the direct beneficiaries of their gift. Charmaine was 17. She was a state AFL footy player, winning best and fairest, and had a premiership win. She was in her final year of school with dreams of going to uni. She was an adventurous girl who travelled overseas with her mother to international conferences and confidently explored foreign cities on her own. Like most teenagers, she was invincible and tackled life head on with little regard for outcomes. Life was living in the moment and to the maximum. She held her driver's licence for 12 days. On the 18th of February 2012, at the ripe age of 17, Charmaine was involved in a horrific car accident. As her car rolled, a large rock crashed through the roof of her car and she sustained a catastrophic open head injury. The trauma to her chest caused both lungs to collapse. Charmaine was trapped inside a vehicle in a river. It was five hours before she was retrieved and successfully ventilated. Charmaine was hypoxic. She also had the additional risk of infection to her brain due to the open head wound and the contaminated river water that she had been trapped in. 36 hours post-accident, it was discovered that her skull had shifted and cut off the carotid artery, resulting in very little to no blood flow to the left hemisphere. It took five days to resolve through increasing the blood pressure in the right hemisphere, thereby forcing it across to the left hemisphere. It was then confirmed Charmaine had lost 70% of the left hemisphere of her brain. A Glasgow Coma Scale is used to evaluate consciousness. It measures eye, verbal and motor responses to stimulus. A Glasgow Coma Scale of 15 is completely awake whereas a Glasgow Coma Scale of 3 is in a profound coma. Charmaine's Glasgow Coma Scale remained at 3 for the next 5 days. On day 6 the neuro team called a meeting with Charmaine's parents and advised that she had a 3% chance of survival and that if she did in fact survive she would more likely be in a vegetative state, that she would never eat she would never walk and she would never talk. They recommended the family say goodbye and turn off life support. Never. This defined means at no time in the past or future. Not ever. Not at all. Fortunately, the medical team had completely underestimated both Charmaine's incredibly determined spirit and her family's immeasurable love for their daughter and sister. Despite mum being a scientist and all the scientific evidence supporting the neurologist's devastating prognosis, they refused to give up. In fact, Charmaine's father Peter spoke to her in Afrikaans and said, if you can hear me, Charmaine, show daddy your teeth. She did. They repeated this again in front of the neurologist who felt it was simply involuntary twitching. At that point, Charmaine's family forbid anyone to discuss anything negative regarding her recovery in front of Charmaine, as they believed she could hear them. Among the many challenges the doctors faced was providing nutrition to Charmaine. Her facial fractures were too excessive to consider tube feeding. Charmaine remained in the intensive care unit for the next 21 days, her life hanging with that 3% chance of survival. The family were asked to sign a DNR form, as the doctors again advised. Charmaine was unlikely to be able to meaningfully communicate with them due to the extensive damage to her brain. It was at this point our paths would cross when I received a phone call from Charmaine's mum, Sharon. Sharon had heard from a friend in South Africa about the listening program. This friend gave her a contact in New Zealand who gave her my contact in Australia. 
I was in the south of Australia and Charmaine was 3,000 kilometres away in the north of Australia. With our home-based therapy of the listening program, distance is not an issue that can't be overcome. I'll never forget that day. When I hung up, I burst into tears. At not only the sadness of the situation, but at the overwhelming weight of helping this family. I had never worked with such a damaged child and had no idea if I could honestly help them. I reached out to Alex Doman for advice. Alex provided me with the guidance and the hope to begin helping this young girl. He explained we needed to give her time to recover before we could consider any significant therapy. With his support, I felt empowered to take action and move forward in helping this young girl. In March 2012, under the advice of Alex, we started the Sound Health series Relax and De-Stress, Thinking and Inspiration, played very gently over speakers. Our goal was to mask the toxic noise of the intensive care unit machines that were critical in keeping her alive, but mindful of the impact on her central nervous system in her fragile state. We used the Sound Health series to nourish and gently support her fragile brain and body. We also implemented the NACD coma protocol. So around the clock, day and night, Charmaine and her family were cradled and bathed in the healing sounds of the Sound Hill series. I must admit it was very hard to have patience and not start the listening program, but we were constantly reminded of the importance of time needed to heal and respecting her body to do that. In April 2012, two months post-accident, the trachea was removed, but there was still very little response from Charmaine and her case notes continued to read, no change. Charmaine's family struggled with the vacant look in her eyes. When would the light shine again? In May, Charmaine suffered another setback in a twisted bowel and required more surgery. The family were again asked to sign a DNR. They refused and continued to use Sound Hill series by day and by night, sleeping at the hospital, ensuring Charmaine was receiving the best possible care. In June, she had a bakelite placed over her damaged brain, where once her perfect skull had been. Finally, four months after her accident, Charmaine really woke up. She discovered quickly that she was blind in her left eye and Charmaine cried for the first time. Around this time, a speech pathologist reviewed Charmaine and advised she would most likely never eat and would need to be peg-fed for the remainder of her life. Finally, in August 2012, we decided it was safe to start Charmaine on the listening program. I used the TLP spectrum, which is specific to brain injury. I was both incredibly nervous and excited. We really had no idea how much TLP spectrum was going to benefit her. My biggest disappointment was that due to the uncertainty of the impact of bone conduction with her damaged skull and the Bakelite, we decided it was safe to use air conduction only. We had no other case worldwide that we could reference to. We began with one module a day and increased to twice a day in week three. What happened was life changing to witness. Remembering we had a child who had been almost non-responsive now for six months. It was truly amazing. We were all so excited. It was like someone had turned the lights on. Finally, after waiting so long and refusing to give up on her, Charmaine responded to TLP Spectrum better than we could ever have prayed for. Highlights once starting TLP Spectrum include high-fiving nurses and visitors, communicating by changing her expression. By November, some 16 weeks later, Charmaine started making speech sounds. She was playing Connect Four and often winning. She hadn't lost her competitive streak. By Christmas, four months after starting TLP, her mother's Christmas wish arrived. Charmaine could say mum. Charmaine's cognition grew every day. She could now understand most of what was being said to her. Do you remember they advised that if she survived, she would never eat, she would never walk, and she would never talk? Well, Charmaine has something that she wants to say.
when you wait, throw away the wheelchair. What kind of car do you want? Jupa. She wants a Jeep. A Jeep? How yeah. big must the Jeep be? She bought a Jeep. Small one. <laughs> and Dad? He's got a big one. Ah, oh, <laughs> so you're going to have a small Jeep. Mm. We'll be able to say she bought a Jeep. Yeah. 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 Throughout 2013, Charmaine continued to use TLP Spectrum across um, and completed two full cycles. We emphasised the sensory integration and speech and language zone. She continued to make steady gains across all areas of speech and motor. As you can see, she still has her sights set on the Jeep. It wasn't all good. Charmaine suffered several setbacks throughout 2013 one of which found her back in intensive care on a feeding tube, a very sick girl. However, after every setback, Charmaine would bounce back. Despite the heartbreak of these setbacks, a clear pattern was emerging. We could definitely draw a reference to stopping the listening program and a result of speech either significantly reducing or ceasing altogether. Then within three to four days of listening restarting, her speech would re-emerge and quickly recover back to where she was. Charmaine was learning to stand in a walker and could make herself a cup of tea. Things were going amazingly well. She just continued to get better and better. However, sadly, after all these incredible gains, in late 2013, Charmaine had a fall landing on the left side of her head, which resulted in a seizure, and she was yet again back in hospital. This set her back enormously. All speech was gone, all fine and gross motor skills lost. Cognition gone. Charmaine was incontinent once again. The silver lining was that, once again, this gave us the opportunity for valuable learning. Yet again, when listening restarted, Charmaine regained her lost skills very quickly and continued to add to them. These setbacks provided undeniable insight to us. It gave all who work with her the opportunity to see the direct link to the TLP spectrum listening and the acquisition of new skills and the withdrawal of that listening and the regression of those newly acquired skills. In August 2014, my husband and I gifted Charmaine the in-time program. I felt concerned that we'd been using TLP spectrum for too long and Charmaine's progress had plateaued. I started her on percussion only using albums one to four. What a brilliant idea and how blessed we were to have the availability of this program. Sheila Allen and Nacho Aramani, thank you for your work. You changed her world. So very exciting, as three weeks later an explosion of unprompted words. Speech becoming clearer and clearer. Charmaine was now, for the first time, using three word sentences. And there were definite improvements in her motor planning. Charmaine loved the change of genre and continued to not only surprise us, but to take our breath away. For the first 16 weeks, I used percussion only and then moved to protocol D, which has more of a zone focus, targeting sensory integration, speech and language, high spectrum, then full spectrum. Three months after starting in time, I met Charmaine and her family at a coffee shop. Without a word of a lie, she spent most of the time flirting with the very handsome young waiter. Her speech is very clear. She's using sentences and her confidence is brimming. And yes, she still has her eye on buying a Jeep. Okay. I, I want to buy, buy. Remember they said that if she survived, she would never eat? Well, believe me, she not only asked for them independently, but she ate the whole bowl of wedges with sour cream and sweet chilli sauce and enjoyed every mouthful. Can I remind you her parents were advised that if she survived, she would, among other things, never walk. She would be in a vegetative state. Remember never? It means at no time in the past or future, not ever, not at all, will never has a friend. That friend is neuroplasticity. Charmaine is now learning to read. Poignantly, Charmaine is experiencing depression. Her cognition is that good that she fully comprehends 
all that she has lost. Her conversational language is increasing. Charmaine is now a registered motivational speaker and is paid to attend the intensive care unit at the Royal Brisbane Hospital where she was a patient for 51 weeks. Every month teenagers in their final year of schooling come in and have the opportunity to see reality. It's a very powerful message with not many kids dry eyed at the end. Charmaine and her family hope that it may save one of them from a similar fate. Charmaine refuses to be in her wheelchair and leaves it at the lift as she proudly enters the intensive care unit, looking those in the eye who she knows advise switching off her life support. There is no bitterness on her part, only satisfaction. This day we walked about 30 metres across a garden to sit together under a tree. She's exponentially increased the distance that she can manage. It was challenging on the uneven ground, but she persisted confidently. Can you smile at me, Shami? <laughs> can you smile at me, Shami? <laughs> so in summary, never. Definition, at no time in the past or future. Not ever. Not at all. Versus neuroplasticity, definition, the brain's ability to reorganize itself by forming new neural connections throughout life. Neuroplasticity allows the neurons in the brain to compensate for injury and disease and to adjust their activities in response to new situations or to changes in their environment. So my therapy of TLP spectrum followed two years later within time has been a drug free non-invasive, not only life-changing, but accurately life-giving intervention. What a beautiful, clear demonstration of neuroplasticity Charmaine is. The opportunity given to the brain to make new neural pathways. And another thought to consider. Imagine, just for a moment, if Charmaine's family had waited for the research. So this beautiful spirited young girl has captured my heart and taught me many valuable life lessons. I feel blessed to be part of the Advanced Brain Technologies community and have access to the tools and valuable learning that I have that has helped me work with Charmaine. It has been a privilege to be part of her journey of recovery and I look forward to the next chapter.